Thank you, Madam President, members. Um, education is a big deal. I think many of us know that. Many of us believe that our Constitution talks about it as a core function of what we need to do as a state to provide for the education of the next generation. You can read in the, uh, art, or the uh, Northwest Ordinance, was written in 1787, the same year as our Constitution, that talks about how important education is for, for the success of our form of government, for good citizenship. It is a big deal. It is 42% in terms of dollars, 42% of our state budget, and it has been for a long time and growing. It's a big deal. For some of us, it's why we are here, why we're in politics, why we're in the legislature. Senator Pratt just mentioned he served on a school board. I served on a school board. I know Senator Weger did. I know there's others who served on school boards. I don't think there's anything that we do in this state that is more important than education. It's not just a government service contrary to what some may think. This is really about people. It's about our kids. It's about our grandchildren. I don't think there's anything more important to a family than the education of their children. I think they will sacrifice, they will do anything to give their children the opportunities that they may not have had. We shouldn't lose sight of that when we talk about education, when we talk about education bills, when we talk about a budget. We ought to reflect those things. And I, I'm, I, I came into this session optimistic. We have a significant surplus. And I thought this would be an opportunity that we should not fail to take, an opportunity to bring about some real reform to education, to make sure that instead of just treating the achievement gap as the problem we love to admire, which is what it's been in the years that I've been here, every year we talk about the achievement gap, about how bad it is, how it's the worst in the country, and how the thing that we're going to do in the bill we pass is going to, going to address that problem, going to solve that problem, going to make progress on that problem, and it never happens. We do the same thing year after year, and it doesn't get better. How many times does it take before we decide we need to do something differently? And I thought this would be the year to do that. We've got an opportunity. We don't have some of the constraints that we've had in the past. We should get down to work and look, about, look at how we can reform the education structure to make sure that more kids and the kids who really need those opportunities find ways to get those opportunities through an education system that works for them. Not for the adults, but works for the kids. And this bill doesn't do that. And that's been mentioned. We've heard a lot of debate. We've had some opportunity to talk about amendments that weren't accepted. I was reading some of the some of the letters that the proponents of the bill talk about as uh, sort of uh, they handed out to us as proof that their bill is a good bill. And here's uh, MREA. And while they say some good things, they say the 1% annual increase is lower than what districts need. Schools for Equity and Education. Senator Weger handed out their letter. They're disappointed with the overall budget. The bill falls short in its meager increase in the general education formula. School Board Association, to meet state requirements and local expectations, our schools need an increase to the basic formula by 3%. These are the people who are being held up as proponents of this bill. I think that's called damning with faint praise. It's interesting to me to hear some of the members of the Democrat majority get up and talk about how disappointed they are in the, in the target that was set and how they wish it could have been higher. Well, who set those targets? It wasn't us on the minority. Republicans didn't set that target. We actually had a bill earlier in this year that, that did have a 3% increase in funding. The Democrat majority set those targets. So if you didn't like them, don't set them. Set them what you thought they should be. Obviously, you didn't. And I don't know why you didn't. But you get up and sort of say, well, they just sort of happened. We have this low target. No, you made that choice. You decided not to have a target that would provide the kind of funding that might meet the needs. And there is a need for reform to the structure. It's not just about spending money. We spend money on education, and we should. Don't misunderstand me. We should spend money on education, but we should also spend money on education with a view of making it work and having a, a commitment to maintain an achievement gap for the last 10, 15, 20 years that's not good enough. There's nothing in this bill that gets at how do you move the needle. We talk about moving the needle on the achievement gap, but nothing in this bill gets at that. 
And what does get at that? And I think it's the things that you've heard some of our amendments talk about. It's about empowering school districts who are elected by parents in their district, who are close to the classroom, who care about their kids in their schools, and they want to see those kids succeed, and giving them the power to make decisions that will work. And if they don't work, they can change those policies. And instead, we stand up here and we say, well, We've been elected to the legislature, so we're much smarter than those people who are elected to the school board, so we can overrule them and tell them how to spend their money. We'll direct them to do it this way. That hasn't worked. It hasn't worked. Let's try something different. But those ideas were rejected. So it's, it's a disappointment for me to see an opportunity that we have had here squandered. And I don't know why. I've heard people on the other side say, well, we could have done it differently, but we didn't but not an explanation of why they didn't do it differently. And so I'm not going to vote for this bill, and I urge others not to vote for it. I think there needs to be a do-over. I think we need to get back to the idea that this is about making sure kids have the opportunity to be successful. And we're not doing that with this bill. As members, I urge a red vote. We can do better in Minnesota, and we need to.